First of all, uh, I, want to make, I want to get your reaction to some reports of what President Macron is supposed to have said, of, of what the French are supposed to have believed with regard to punishing Britain, deliberately punishing Britain for voting leave. Uh, is that your take on what the French government's position is? Well, good morning, Tom. Uh, could I just say we're not an overseas territory, we're a crown dependency, but that's a bit technical probably for your viewers. Um, the reality is we knew uh, after the Brexit vote that the European Union view was that no country leaving could have an improvement on their previous relationship. In fact, some uh, felt that uh, it had to be economically worse leaving rather than remaining. Of course, we in Jersey didn't have a vote on uh, the referendum because we were never a full member of the European Union and we were just in for goods. Um, and so what we have done is been involved with the UK in the negotiation of the Brexit deal. And we believe that actually it's in our best long term interest to make that deal work. Um, but the deal is technical. The deal requires our officials to sit down and go through evidence, go through data, and that really is at the heart of the fishing dispute whether vessels can show that they fished in our waters for those uh, three year period and what evidence is required. Um, previously, they had to fill in log books, and so we say the best evidence is. A logbook. Show us those logbooks. If you've that logbook shows you fished in our water, you can have a license. If it doesn't, then we can't give you a license because we will be breaching the trade deal. But coming back to the energy issue, um, of course, you're up in Glasgow. The energy or electricity that we get through a private contract between two private companies here in Jersey and in France is nuclear and renewable. How can it be in the global interest for France to threaten or to reduce, to cut off or add extra tariffs to that energy supply when the alternative would be for us to have to fire up our power station, which is diesel generated, therefore increasing uh, carbon emissions, even at the heart of the fishing issue? We know that sustainable fishing with smaller vessels uh, will help improve the carbon emission position and help maintain global warming at uh, appropriate levels. Large fishing vessels, That's unsustainable practices, um, do the opposite. Mm. That's extraordinary. At the moment, we're hearing so many uh, charges against many world leaders. We haven't heard many charges against President Macron, but that is such a fascinating perspective that indeed his threats, uh, particularly against Jersey, could indeed lead to power to diesel powered uh, uh, diesel fired power stations being uh, started up again, and indeed uh, a, a much less ecological approach to fishing. I, I suppose I wonder here whether the French just really haven't read the terms terms of the trade and cooperation agreement, an agreement that many people at the time at which it was signed said, oh, has, has completely done the British over on fishing. Well, potentially, it seems like now it could actually be a better deal for British fishermen and a little bit harder on the French than was first thought. Well, as far as Jersey is concerned, it's a separate clause. Uh, and we very much believe that it's in our best long term uh, sustainable interest for our uh, fisheries. But it's a change from what was previously in place. And I think that some uh, from some perspectives, it's that change that's not been well understood perhaps in France. Previously, vessels were licensed by France to fish in Jersey waters uh, if they had uh, a historic right. Under the trade deal, they, it's not about historic rights, it's about whether they actually fished during the previous three years for more than 10 days, and so they have to show the evidence. So it's absolutely clear that the terms are different and therefore the number of licenses issued uh, was going to be reduced. In terms of a, a smaller territory, one that is surrounded by water, what do you want to see come out of COP26? Is Jersey behind a net zero agenda? 
Yeah, we have uh, in Jersey, and I'll be joining uh, you in Glasgow at some point tomorrow if I can get away. Um, we have a ambitious uh, target to be net zero uh, during. To, at 2030. We know that's ambitious. We know that the technologies are in their infancy and simply being trialled. But of course, for finance centres like Jersey, it's not just the domestic actions that islanders and the government will take, important as they are. Uh, the real changing factor is what fi the finance industry uh, does and how it invests in renewables uh, and with the FDI that it sustains around the globe, how it supports net zero in those policies and those investments deci decisions. And I think for places like Jersey, uh, the finance conversations and the changes there are where we can have a real tangible benefit uh, to seeing uh, these climate change issues addressed. That's a, that's a really interesting perspective and one that we don't hear that much on broadcast news uh, in, in the UK. Um, finally, in this conversation, Senator, I, I wanted to ask, do you have a message to President Macron uh, that you want to get across now? What would be, what, if, if you were standing in front of him in terms of getting this dispute settled, restoring relatively normal relations, what would you say to him? Well, today talks are ongoing uh, at official level between Jersey, the UK, France and the EU. But my message would be a simple one. Uh, let's keep talking. Let's keep working through the evidence so that vessels that should be licensed can be licensed. If they can't show that evidence, they're not entitled to a license. It's a technical, complicated issue. Uh, it can't be resolved by threats and bullying. And it's not in anybody's interest that it is.